How's it going? So Nick, tell the class what you found. Okay, so I picked up a couple nips, a buck a piece, and because uh, they looked interesting. This is Yukon Jack Jacapple, or Jackapple, or Jacaple, if you are not able to pronounce things properly. And, you know, 35% alcohol, so it's only a little bit less than normal Jack Daniels. But it's got, it got apple flavoring, so I thought, okay, sure, I'll, I'll give that a shot for a dollar. And this takes me back to college in not the good way because it, it smells exactly like Burnett's Sour Apple Vodka, which was good in college when my body could process anything. It's less good now that my body feels repercussions. But now that you're an old person towards the end of your early 20s. Don't remind me. I turned 25 and, oh God, like two months, three months. Oh no, it what must month be is so, it, February? It, it must be so hard on three you. Three months. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> Stop being older and Stop bitter about it. Stop giving me perspective, you asshole. <laughs> Stop being the right person. I want to be the right person. But yes, I, I tried a sip of this stuff. Yeah, as did I. I'm going to try a second sip, but... Um, that was a bigger sip. Okay. Well, it's I, not a big sip. Bigger than last time. Dave, how did, how did you describe it? I had it? just a little tiny sip, and my instant reaction was... I think an apple just exploded in my throat. Because it's like sour apple. Like, I didn't expect... Like, I knew it would be... Oh, there's a little left. Oh. <laughs> Can't let any of that go to waste. I paid a dollar for this nip. I'm not letting it go to waste. In this economy? So here's the idea Dave had. He was asking if we were supposed to cut it with something. You know, because you can cut, you know, whiskey with stuff. And... <laughs> That's your first lesson, kids. Yeah, you can. You kids, oh god, I'm not that terrible of a person. Uh, <laughs> so Justin Bieber, if you're watching this... <laughs> Justin Bieber, if you're watching this, get the fuck out of America. Anyhow. No, I could be watching it from Canada, they do have internet there. Anyhow. Lies. Vicious slander. <laughs> All lies and slander. We Canadians are stuck in our medieval ways. It's, it's like how we and the Russians were constantly lying to each other about our space programs to make the others feel intimidated. <laughs> Meanwhile, Canada was pretending they had internet. <laughs> exactly. It's the same way. <laughs> so, I was thinking about what to you know, cut this with. We don't have any more regular Coke in the house. We have Diet Coke, which is just a terrible abomination against men. We have Bark's Root Beer, which is good for cutting cheap whiskey, but... I don't think it would go well with apple. I mean, maybe, but really the point of mixing something with Coke or root beer or something is because the Coke will usually just mute the taste completely and cover it with a Coke taste. And the root beer blends nicely with kind of a whiskey taste. David, being the insightful genius he is. Who doesn't drink alcohol. <laughs> right. Noticed we had Orange Crush sitting right here and said, Apples and oranges! We can finally compare them by you mixing them together. bastard. Which, this is gonna be so bad, it... You're doing it. Oh god, this is gonna be disgusting. But now I need to know. <laughs> Son of a bitch, okay. I'm gonna regret this so hard. This is, this is just gonna be... Oh, that has an afterburn. Okay. Describe the taste. Well, it tastes like a shitty college drink. That's for sure. Um, the kind of thing you make at a party because this was the cheapest alcohol you could find and the only thing you could cut it with in your fridge. Which has ended well for us. We invented the Brunello that way with pomegranate vodka and mellow yellow because we had mellow yellow, who, who'd have figured. But this is less successful than that. This is one of those off nights when it's like, hey, who ordered raspberry Sviedka? Which we actually never had the money for Sviedka. That's, that's how broke ass we were in college. Um, but... I'm just going to pretend I understand references to alcohol. Basically...
You know when you're at, like, McDonald's and you're, like, 12 and you decide, I don't know what drink I want, I'm gonna get all of them! Ah, uh, yes. That ended poorly for me as a child. Did it? Um, I don't, I don't know if you even remember this, but it was one day in uh, Colorado, I mixed all, when we were in Colorado for yeah. the summer, I mixed every drink they had, including the apple juice. Oh, you told me about that. And, uh... It probably tastes like that, then, because that had apple juice. Let me try. Ladies and gentlemen... This... this doesn't deserve a toast. <laughs> it's the afterburn that gets you. Yeah, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Um... Yeah, I mean, it... Hold on. It's like an acidic creamsicle. It's, uh... <laughs> there is that, I guess. See, I, I was trying to compare it to some sort of, like, fruit smoothie, but that sounds delicious. It's not like that. It's like a fruit smoothie made with sour grapes. Except there's no grape flavor. But you know where it's... It's like... The fruit's a little too ripe. I don't know. I can manage. <laughs> I've drunk worse than this. I... For those of you who are a fan of Douglas Sirk, the auteur from the 1950s who made really painful melodramas, I had to give a presentation on There's Always Tomorrow with Fred McMurray and I believe Barbara Stanwyck, although it's been three years so I don't quite remember, but that is the most painful film I've ever had to watch, probably. I have seen films where people are literally castrated, and that is still the most emasculated I've ever felt watching a movie. Oh, it went, we, we, we tried to watch it, and then our last group member showed up. We had to stop it, do shots of whatever we could find, which was raspberry burnets, or strawberry burnets. It tasted like cough syrup, but like cough syrup after you've taken out everything that tastes good. Mm. So filter cough syrup through failure. And that's what this tasted like. Anyhow. So not the worst thing I've ever had, but not my brightest decision. And you're just gonna keep drinking it. I paid a dollar, David. Which actually when I say it out loud doesn't sound like that much. I think I have a dollar in my wallet, so I could reimburse myself for this, but still. Onward and upward! I paid a dollar. This is a McChicken's worth of, of drink. Exactly. can't imagine this thing's going to be any better. I am not mixing them together. That is not happening. Yeah, that's bad. I was hoping because it was honey, it'd be better than normal Seagram 7, because I can't really do Seagram 7 straight. I usually have to mix it with something. And yet you bought it. I was hoping it'd be better, because it's honey. And that would be good to know. If there was a Seagram's, I could drink straight. But it doesn't seem like it. I might have to mix that with the rest of the barks. Which doesn't sound like a recombination anyway. Anyhow, this was not as funny as I was hoping. It's more just... <laughs> this has been Nick Gross's People Out. Oh, we're doing that? Jeez, I have not been bringing my egg in. <laughs> Throw me one of those onions. <laughs>